Hey guys, Russ Tyndall here with Blue Line CNC coming at you with another video. Today we're talking about the elephant in the room and that's CNC maintenance. I don't know about you, but I don't like maintaining my CNC. I would much rather just get to cutting projects and doing what I do best. But it is a necessary evil and if it's not done and we don't do the required maintenance, there's a possibility that this machine or your machine could uh, fail mid-project uh, and something catastrophic could happen, who knows? Uh, and I don't know about you, but I would sure hate to have something bad happen that could be prevented just through simple maintenance procedure. Now, what I'm gonna show you in this video is what I do to maintain my CNC. It's not the end all get all to CNC maintenance. In fact, if your CNC manufacturer recommends something different, by all means, go in that direction and do what your manufacturer states. Um, but I just wanna show you what I do and what works for me. And if you don't have a maintenance procedure in place and you wanna adopt what I do, great. Uh, I think the point that I'm trying to make is just do something and do it regularly. Keep your machine clean because if you take care of your machine, it'll take care of you. So with that said, let's go and I'll show you what I do. All right, folks, let's start by looking at some of the products that I use when I clean my CNC. I use these white rags. They come in a box. There's 200 of them in a box. And not only do they work great on uh, CNC cleaning, but they also work great in other areas of the shop. Uh, you can't go wrong with these. Uh, they hold together a lot better than paper towels. And uh, when it comes to, especially when it comes to cleaning the CNC, you'll find that they work real good. And now I also use rubbing alcohol, or it's also referred to as isopropyl alcohol. I stick with the higher alcohol content volume. And as you see here, this is a 91%. They sell it in other versions. I think you can get a 71% and I think there's one in the 80s, but I, sh I stick with the 91% because it's got a higher alcohol content. It will evaporate quicker and you don't want uh, this uh, alcohol sitting on your surfaces, your metal surfaces, for extended periods of time. You want it to evaporate as soon as possible. If you use a 70%, it will sit on the surfaces longer. PTFE lubricant, the three-in-one oil, is a must. I uh, use that. I also use a good quality grease gun. And I also use a black, or it's not black, rather, but it's all-purpose lithium grease. It's actually green colored and you'll want to pick yourself up a tube or two of that. Uh, so uh, I will, again, I will link all of, the, all, all of these products in the description below so you don't have to worry about writing any of this stuff down. Uh, I start with, uh, uh, by s spreading a towel underneath the spindle and the gantry where I'll be working and that's just to protect the spoil board and to keep the items from falling down on, or any dirt and debris that may, uh, uh, fall down onto the spoil board. I don't want to collect all that. So now my machine uses gear tracks and linear guide rails and I find that most of my sawdust is uh, accumulates around at least the visible part accumulates around these linear uh, bearing blocks and I use a dental pick and I carefully go through and remove the particles from the face of these bearing blocks. And as you see here, it's just a matter of scraping it away. Uh, I'm not getting aggressive and scratching anything. I'm just lightly going and uh, uh, getting those particles and getting them off the machine and wiping them on a paper towel. Here on the left side of the spindle, you can see I get it pretty good. You can see that little chunk there. And just there, uh, removing the dirt from the four bearing blocks, you can see it accumulate what I've accumulated so far. And we can't forget our Y axis, and we want to get both sides of our uh, our, our bearing blocks on the uh, the Y plus and the Y minus on both sides of the machine, on the left and right sides of the machine. We want to do the same thing here that we did up on the top of the X-axis. 
The next thing is to take a little isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel, on a white rag, rather, and wipe the ends of the bearing blocks down and get any residue that might be left over, get any, get any of the re, uh, remaining dirt. Pretty simple. And you just want to get it on this side and the other side. And we can't forget our y-axis either. We want to get do the same thing there. Um, most of the instructions here I'm showing you are on the, the gantry here on the x-axis. But you're going to do this to your machine on the, the x-axis as well as your y-axis. If your z-axis has this as well and you can access your z-axis, you're going to want to do it on the z-axis as well. My z-axis is sealed. I'll explain that a little bit later. But here you can see the linear rails, they, they get kind of gunky and kind of dirty. So we're going to want to clean that off. And it is a lot dirtier than you may think, trust me, as you'll see here in a minute. And how we do this is we put some rubbing alcohol on a white rag and we just wipe these linear rails down really, really good on all the surfaces. And look how gunky and dirty that got. That was just the top surface of that one rail. So once you get the linear rails done on the left side of the machine, on the left side of the spindle, you want to use your controller and move the spindle to the left so you can access the entire uh, surface of the linear rails on the right side. And you're going to want to repeat those procedures just like you did on the left side and clean those surfaces as well with a white paper towel and rubbing alcohol. And just be systematic in what you do and take your time. It doesn't, overall, it doesn't take very long. I think it took me about. 15 20 minutes to clean my machine and as you see there that was some of the dirt with just a couple passes now my gear track sits on the top of my gantry and it's it pretty much stays clean except for a little residue which seems to collect on the top portion of the aluminum extrusion so again isopropyl alcohol on a white rag does wonders at cleaning this up the only thing that really happens when I use the white rag is it, uh, because that gear track is so sharp, it actually shreds some of the uh, white rag itself. But overall, it does a great job. And then uh, to get the residue of this white rag off of there, some of those shreds, I just use an airline and spray that off and that'll clean it out of there really good and it gets it pretty good we can't uh, again forget using that uh, white rag and isopropyl alcohol to clean the linear rails on both sides of the table on the y-axis. And you see I got that black dust cover there which sits above the linear rails. That does a really good job for the most part at keeping it clean, uh, but you still need to get under there and clean it. Next thing we're going to want to do is take that PTFE lubricant, that three-in-one oil, and we are going to want to lightly coat these linear rails. And we're just going to put a few drops, just enough to lightly, uh, I wouldn't say soak, uh, but just place a little bit on, on a white rag uh, towards visible. And then we're just going to go over the linear rails with that as well and and trust me it doesn't take much at all we're just lightly coating the surface and right there you saw about three or four drops was enough to do that 
uh, almost that whole left side of that linear rail. Uh, once we get uh, the linear rails to the left of the, the spindle, we're going to want to again move that spindle over and we're going to want to do the same thing on the right side as you see me doing here. Again, just a few drops goes a long way. And lastly, we're going to uh, use our uh, grease gun with our lithium grease. And we're going to go in our little zerks. And what I do is I give the uh, zerks one pump of lithium grease. It's just a matter, from, from my machine, it's just a matter of lining that, that grease gun up and applying pressure and, again, one pump. And then I just wipe it down with a paper towel to clean off any residual. Then what you want to do is once you've got your machine serviced and you've got all uh, linear rails, bearing blocks, every, and gear tracks, everything's all greased and looking good and shiny is you want to run the machine and you want to uh, move it to its fullest extent to make sure everything is working smoothly and good. Folks, if this video has been helpful in any way, uh, I would really appreciate if you haven't already to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I post new content. I post uh, content frequently and uh, it's all CNC related and I promise you'll love it. Um, getting back to the machine itself, I, uh, I didn't really talk a whole lot about the Z-axis and the reason is, is my Z-axis is sealed. That spindle right there probably weighs about 50 or 60 pounds. And for me to get to the inside area and the inner working, inner, excuse me, inner workings of my Z-axis, I would have to remove that spindle, take off the tramming plate, uh, and take off a lot of what you see. So for that reason, uh, this has been more or less sealed by the manufacturer, and I pretty much leave it alone. So with that said, folks, hey, like and subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you on the next video. Cheers.